Hello, and welcome to Cardboard and Plastic. Today's video, I'm going to be going over what research I do to see if a card is, has a possibility of being fake on eBay. And I've been buying raw cards on eBay since 2020, a lot of them, I've graded them, and I have never bought a fake card. But I almost did a few times until I did just a little research. And I'm going to show you that research I do. So, uh, first of all, do not buy a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle raw off of eBay. That is stupid. Um, let's see if there's anybody that did. So, well, number one, uh, $250,000. Uh, this is a fake card. You can actually tell by the white borders. Um, and what I usually do as well, and I'll show you kind of what I go through to kind of see if I'm going to bid on a card or if it's real. A few things. Number one, I look at the back of the card. A lot of times from the front, you can't tell, but from the back of the card, especially like this one, uh, first of all, here, we know that this is fake. The person is using blue gloves. We all know that if you want to show off your cards, you got to put the white glove on. So, with this here, you can kind of see that this does not look like the cardstock. You can actually see, do you see kind of like the red kind of bleeds out from the lettering? Just a lot of things wrong with this. And plus this like streak line there, this is kind of like just a normal printer would do something like that. So this is a fake card. Um, we could tell by a few things with the centering, how white it is by the back of the card how this bleeds, the card stock. If you take a look at the card, it looks like it was cut with a razor blade because it probably was because this is not a factory cut. And this is really important. Get your hands on some 1952 cards, 1953 tops. And once you do that, you'll be able to see those cards in your hand. And then when you look on eBay, it will be very obvious. Now, the other thing you need to do is you got to look at the seller. So the seller itself, we got to look at their other items. Now they do not have cards, right? So why is he selling a 1952 Mickey Mantle and then he's selling a pre-Columbian seated Chinisco Neret figure? I'm sorry about how I pronounce that, but there's no way that he's selling these cards. Oh, look at this. This is probably gonna be gone by the time you see the video. A $1,600, 1990 Fleer, Michael Jordan. This is a $1 to $2 card for $1,600. See, right off the bat, you can tell this person has no idea of what they're doing with the sports cards. They deal with antiques. And also, I love to read The, re, uh, the descriptions here. This card has only been handled with latex gloves and a rubber tongue. No fingerprints are touching by hands ever. I usually use rubber tongs myself to handle my cards. This card is likely a seven or better. They have no idea about grading. They don't have one graded card, but they're going to tell you what it's graded at. I've been collecting cards for 25 years. Well, you just bought a fake card, so maybe they spent $10,000 on this fake card because they have no idea what they are doing. And, well, of course, having a Picasso tells you that they know a lot about sports cards. And he has other beauties like Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb. He has over $500,000 or 500,000 cards, but the only two cards he ever sold was or tried to sell was a Mickey Mantle and a 1990 Fleer. Michael Jordan, that he's valuing at about $1,600. So, again, just be very careful. Let's see if we can find another fake. So we got reels, you can tell. I mean, most of these cards are off-centered. They're going to have not-so-white borders, right? And then we go down, all those are real. Oh, boom, we got another fake card. Somebody paid over $20,000 for this. Hopefully... It went to CSG, they laughed, and they sent it right back to 
whoever this is, Marcos. So again, look at the card, white borders, perfectly centered. Now look at the back of the card. Do you see again, we have the bleeding here. Now the other thing that I want you to notice, two things, and then we're going to kind of look and I can tell you exactly where this card came from. Do you see right by the 1008, do you see it kind of juts in like this? Now, some Mickey Mantles do have that. However, if you take a look over here by the 357, there's a little black dot to the left of it. So these are identifiers. And a lot of these reprints, they have the same identifiers. And if you know what those are, you can really tell if a card is real or fake just by those. So if we go to a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle on Etsy, right? Just type in 19, just go to Etsy, type in the card, and you can actually see where the fakes are. So here is the fake. And if we take a look at the card, there's so many similarities between this and the other card. Now, if we take a look here, you could tell. Do you see by the 1008? Do you see how that line juts in and out? And then if we go to the 357, do you see that little block, uh, little black dot right by the 357 on that border? So these match up perfectly. So not only do we know that that Mickey Mantle is fake, but it came from a seller that makes these fakes that puts these on Etsy. And a lot of these fakes do come from Etsy and people buy them and they try to sell them off as real on eBay. All right, so take a look and then if we go down, let's see if we can find another fake. Ooh, look at this one. This does not look good as well. So somebody paid 3500 for it. So again, it has really good centering. It looks like it was artificially aged. You get experience with this. And also, do you see that like it's creased, but all the creases are bright white. So the like the color of the card is very aged, but then we have bright white when somebody tried to like bend and crease it to try to make it look like it was older. And the back of the card, uh, the printing looks horrible. That's not the card stock. And what's the next image? Oh, at least they're kind of honest. Um, a PSA questionable authentic uh, authenticity. So this is fake, right? Even PSA said it back to him, said it's fake, and they're still trying to sell it off as real. And they're going to send it to CSG, and then they're going to get it back in their hands when it fails. And that's the one of the good things about the CSG, uh, the PSA guarantee authenticity. Hopefully somebody else doesn't get ripped off or three to four thousand dollars all right so again we showed the how you can try to compare these cards with etsy and another it doesn't have to be a 1952 mickey metal it could be a very common card that goes for fifty dollars and a lot of the fakes now are kind of between this fifty and two hundred dollars because the seller doesn't have to send these to um, the eBay authenticity, they can just send it directly to you, the buyer. And most buyers don't know the difference between a real and fake, so they rip you off and they spend $3, they sell it for 50 So a very common card, it doesn't seem like it would be, not only the 1986 Jordan, but the 87, the 88, and also the 88 All-Star are faked a lot. And there's two types of fakes, and this seller is basically showing you the two types of fakes that they have. Now notice here, perfectly centered. The colors are just not right. You get experience with handling these cards. Uh, do you see uh, with the Jordan that print background is very subdued on a real card that's very prevalent? And I'll kind of show you that. On the back of the card, do you see that it's no chipping at all on the borders? Now a few things here. If we make it bigger, eh, let's go keep it smaller. Do you see right where I'm circling, there's a little print dot, 
right circle there and also with the logo do you see it's pushed downwards do you see with this it's almost like a bright orange and it goes up after the white right so all these are little identifiers from the back of the card that if we take a look at a card on eBay, we could try to match it up and see if it's a fake or not. What about, uh, this is another fake. This one's very obvious. If you ever see a Jordan All-Star, and I've seen a bunch of these on eBay, it doesn't even like, the. do you see here that it kind of blends in gradient? Here, it's just like a circle around it. This is a horrible print quality. I've seen these on eBay quite a bit. So, I did find one of these. So this is the sold section. And all these look good. You just kind of see like it's off-centered, has chipping, right? This is way off-center top to bottom. And if we go down, there is a fake I found pretty quickly right here for $48.65. Now, if we take a look at this card here, how do I know this is a fake? Well, a couple of things. First of all, do you see the perfect centering? Do you see the cut? It is perfect. And if we take a look at the back of the card, do you see there's absolutely zero chipping? That is beyond uncommon for the card. Now, if we take a look a little bit closer, do you see the logo, how it's pushed down exactly the same as this logo? Now, remember that little print dot right there. If we take a look at the back of this card, let's go back one image here. Do you see right there, we got that same exact print dot in the same exact location. And do you see how the orange kind of goes up right here? We have that same exact characteristic. So this card is most likely a fake. And again, if we go to the seller, they do have like some cheaper cards. And I really don't like what they're doing. They don't know much about cards. Error misprint rookie card, right? And so they just have some weird stuff. Let's go to uh, sold items here. And really, they don't have too many expensive cards, but they have a perfectly centered, beautiful. Oops, is this sold? Nope, go to sold. Oh, geez, they got like Michael Jordan signed autographs with some type of authenticity, I have no idea. But you see like what they're selling. They have Tom Brady autographs, superstar autographs, no other real cards that they sold, but then they have a beautiful centered first edition. What does first edition mean, Michael Jordan, right? So look at the sellers, look at the card, look at Etsy, try to be a little bit of a detective and you will basically be able to pick out 90% of the fakes. Now also here, if we take a look, I brought up some PSA 10. So let's look at what a PSA 10 would look like, right? So if we look at a PSA 10, first of all, you can kind of see that there's like print defects all over this card, right? That are, that probably shouldn't get a PSA 10. That's a different story. But if we look at the back of the card, do you see how there's, you could see chipping very visible, even on a PSA 10, there's going to be chipping on those borders. If you have any experience with those all-star cards, there's chipping everywhere. And notice that the logo is pretty well centered here. And there's characteristics that don't match up with that fake card that we saw on Etsy. Now, also on the front of the card, do you see how prominent those background marks are? If we take a look at our fake card here, do you see how subdued they are? And then if we go to the Jordan, they're very subdued here as well. So this is what I do to kind of look for fake cards. 
just go to Etsy, take a look there, do some investigation, and you'll be able to pick out those fake cards. That's how I taught myself how to do it. I've never been fooled yet, but maybe sometime I will be fooled. So again, have a great day and keep on collecting.